commission research and education center presents lecture on markov chains and these are also known as markov process your teacher today is dr subhash kakkar he is phd from fms delhi university he is mba fms delhi university he is pe mechanical delhi college of engineering delhi university he is also six sigma master black belt he is sap r3 pp consultant and he has over 40 years experience of corporate sector and academics presently he is working as director omisha research and education center delhi du campus mark of chains mark of mark of process is a stochastic probabilistic process which has the property that the probability of a transition from a given state to any future state is dependent only on the present state and not on the manner in which it was reached this is named after henry markov applications of markov chains to study how a random variable changes over time the study how the market share of a product changes year after year to study the behavior of the price of a certain share during a certain period it is also used to study the behavior of customers with respect to a certain product over a time the nature of markov processes may be illustrated by taking a simple problem of a truck rental company let's assume xyz rental company operates agencies in several cities trucks sent to one city may return to any city where the company operates if this problem is considered to be as a markov process then the states would be the different rental cities a particular transition probability pij would be the probability that a truck rented at city i would return to city j where j could be equal to i also estimates of transition probability could be obtained by checking customer invoices this problem can be stated in the mathematical structure to determine expected long term fraction of trucks at each city and the mean number of trips a truck would make starting from city i before returning to that location markov process has become a versatile tool for solving some of the management problems especially in the areas of marketing most markov models have been used to determine eventual market share of a product it is widely used in examining and predicting the behavior of customer in terms of their brand loyalty and the switching pattern to other brands markov process has also been employed in the study of equipment maintenance and failure problems analyzing accounts receivable that will ultimately become bad debts it is also useful in the study of stock market price movements further <coughs> markov processes can be illustrated by means of examples the first example the statement is <coughs> pepsi and coke are competing with each other in a restricted market over the years pepsi's customers have exhibited a high degree of loyalty as measured by the fact that customers using pepsi's product 80% of the time also former customers purchasing the product from coke have switched back to pepsi's 60% of the time 
a construct and interpret the state transition in terms of retention and loss second retention and gain b part calculate the probability of a customer purchasing pepsi's product at the end of the second period now we'll illustrate the diagrams algebraically conditional probabilities in the above matrix can be stated as the probability pepsi not oblique coke 1 is equal to p11 and it is equal to 0.80 which is stated in the problem this means that the probability that the customer now using pepsi's product at n equal to 0 means present purchase will again purchase pepsi's product at n equal to 1 its next purchase is 0.80 this implies retention to pepsi's product similarly the second part p probability coke not oblique pepsi 1 is equal to p to 1 is equal to 0.60 this means that the probability that the customer now using coke's product at n is equal to 0 in present purchase will purchase coke's product at n is equal to 1 that is next purchase is 0.20 this implies last two coke's product third part probability pepsi 2 oblique coke 1 is equal to p12 n is equal to 0.20 this means that the probability that the customer now using pepsi's product at n0 present purchase will purchase coke's product at n is equal to 1 means next purchase is 0.20 this implies last to pepsi's product fourth point probability coke 0 oblique coke 1 is equal to p22 and it is equal to 0.40 This means that the probability that the customer now using Coke's product at n is equal to zero means present purchase will purchase Coke's product at n is equal to one means next purchase is 0.40. This implies retention to Coke's product. The transition probability from state A I is equal to Pepsi at n is equal to zero. to another state aj is equal to coke at n is equal to 2 can be represented by two types of diagrams one is transition diagram and the second is probability tree diagram the diagram shown in the slide is transition diagram here pepsi and coke two companies are shown in the form of two nodes and the probabilities are written on the arrows which show the movement now if we look at the p12 probability which is equal to 0.20 and we are talking about pepsi 80% of the customers are retained by pepsi and 20% of the customers move on to coke similarly coke 60% of the customers go to pepsi and 40% of the customers are retained by coke this is what is shown in the diagram also now we'll see the t tree diagram probability in the form of tree diagram the first node is pepsi as stated in, in the statement 80% are retained by pepsi that's why it is shown that 80% move on to pepsi whereas 20% move on to coke from the top pepsi node 80% again move on to pepsi at the second state and 20% move on to coke and similarly at the bottom from coke 60% are moving to pepsi and 40% are moving to coke and this is at the second state now if we concentrate only on the second state against pepsi 0.64 and this has come from multiplying 0.8 into 0.8 it is 0.64 and against coke it is 0.16 multiplying by 0.2 and 0.8 bottom 
again against pepsi it is written 0.12 0.12 has come by multiplying 0.2 and 0.6 and similarly against coke it is 0.08 it has come by multiplying 0.2 into 0.4 now we have against pepsi 0.64 against coke it is 0.16 against pepsi it is 0.12 against coke it is 0.08 now we have to add the pepsi's percentage is separately and coke's percentage is separately if we add pepsi's we'll get 0 0.6 0 0.76 which is 0 0.64 plus 0 0.12 similarly for coke we'll have to add 0 0.16 and 0 0.08 and this will become 0 0.24 and we can check our calculation also 0.76 plus 0.24 is 1. So our calculation is correct when mm. all the probabilities are shown on the probability tree diagram. And similar, we can make the similar diagram starting with Coke. From Coke, 60% are moving on to Pepsi and 40% are retained by Coke. And again, second state from Pepsi. 80% go to Pepsi and 20% move on to Coke. At the bottom, from Coke, 60% go to Pepsi and 40% are retained by Coke. And we get the probabilities as against Pepsi, it is 0.48. Against Coke, it is 0.12. Against Pepsi, it is 0.24. Against Coke, it is 0.16. Now, adding Pepsi's probability separately and Coke's probability separately, we get for Pepsi 0.72, which has come by adding 0.48 and 0.24. And similarly for Coke, it is 0.28, which will be by adding 0.12 and 0.16. And to check the calculation, 0.72 plus 0.28 is 1. So our calculation is correct. This can also be shown by a solution through matrices the first matrices 1 0 we are assuming the entire market share is with pepsi and coke doesn't have any share so we are starting with 1 0 pepsi 100 percent coke 0 percent and the probabilities are written in the next matrix 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 0 0.8 means 80% is retained by Pepsi, 20% move on to Coke, 60% again move on to Pepsi, 0.4% are retained by Coke. And next state, probabilities can be calculated by multiplying these two <coughs> matrices. So one, will, 1 multiplied by 0 0.8 plus 0 into 0 0.6 is nothing but 0 0.8. Similarly, 1 into 0.2 plus 0 into 0.4 is 0.2. So, after first state, 80% is, is the share of Pepsi, 20% is the share of Coke. Similarly, we can calculate the state. Next state, we'll start with 0.8 and 0.2. 0 0.8 is Pepsi's market share and 0.2 is Coke's market share. And the same matrix will be used, 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.4. And same cal calculation, 0 0.8 into 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2 into 0 0.6 is equal to then 0 0.64 plus 0 0.12 and the total is 0 0.76. Similarly, we'll get it 0 0.2 for Coke. So 76% is the market share of Pepsi and 24% is the market share of Coke at the second state. Similarly, we can calculate for the further states also. <clears throat> and the next state, again, similar calculation we'll have to make. In this case, we'll find that the Pepsi's share is 75.2 and Coke's share is 24.8. And now we'll have to calculate what is the market share of Pepsi and Coke at equilibrium. So we'll have to equations and solve them long run probabilities so we'll make the equations like matrix is given 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 
the first equation is a is equal to 0.8a plus 0.6b and b is equal to 0.2a plus 0.4b and of course a plus b is equal to 1 after solving these two equations okay and we'll get the value of a as 0.75 and b it is 0.25 and these are the long run probabilities of the market share of pepsi and coke pepsi will have 75 percent of the market share and the coke will have 25 percent of the market share in the long run we can have one more example on january 1 this year bakery a had 40 percent of its local market share while the other two bakeries b and c had 40 percent and 20 percent respectively of the market share based upon a study by a marketing research firm the following facts were compiled bakery a retains 90 percent of its customers while gaining five percent of b's customers and 10 percent of c's customers bakery b retains 85 percent of its customers while gaining five percent of a's customers and 7% of C's customers. Bakery C retains 83% of its customers and gains 5% of A's customers and 10% of B's customers. What will each firm's share be on January 1 next year and what will each firm's market share be at equilibrium? So, we'll use the similar method for this also. Again, we are ma making two <coughs> matrices. The first matrices gives us the present market share, which has been stated in the problem. And next matrix is the statements given in the problem and converted into the form of matrix. So first is 0 0.4, 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. And the matrix against A, if we read the row, 0 0.9, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And B, it is 0 0.05, 0 0.85, and 0.1. Again, C, it is 0 0.1, 0 0.07, and 0.83. Now, we want to calculate what is the market share at the end of one year. So, we'll have to multiply these two matrices. And multiplication will be done like this. 0.4 into 0.9 plus 0.4 into 0 0.05 plus 0.2 into 0.1, we will get 0 0.36 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.02 and it is equal to 0.4. Second for B, 0.4 into 0 0.05 plus 0.85 into 0.4 plus 0.2 into 0 0.07 and we will get 0 0.02 plus 0 0.34 plus 0 0.014 the total will be 0.374. Last for C, 0.4 into 0 0.05 plus 0.4 into 0.1 plus 0.8 in 0.83 into 0.2, which is equal to 0.02 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.166. It is equal to 0.226. And if we add these probabilities, means 0.4 plus 0.374 plus 0.226 we will get 1 our calculation is correct so a <coughs> bakery will enjoy 40 percent share b bakery will enjoy 37.4 percent share whereas c bakery will enjoy 22.6 percent share at the end of one year now we want to calculate what is the market equilibrium so we'll have to make the equations and solve them and these simultaneous equations when these are solved we will get the answer to our second part of the question which is the probabilities at the equilibrium point the first equation formed is a is equal to 0.90 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.10 and the second equation is b is equal to 0.05 a plus 0.85 b plus 0.07 c and c is equal to 0.05 a plus 0 0.10 b plus 0 0.83 c and these are can converted into our natural form where we get on the right hand side zeros only 
So if we make the conversion, we will get minus 0.10a plus 0.05b plus 0.10c is equal to 0 as equation 1, 0.05a minus 0.15b plus 0.07c equal to 0, equation number 2, 0.05a plus 0.10b minus 0.17c is equal to 0. And of course, we will have a fourth equation, a plus b plus c equal to 1. Now, we'll use Cramer's rule to solve the simultaneous equations. And Cramer's rule is a method for solving a linear system of equations using determinants. Cramer's rules may only be used when the system is square and the coefficient matrix is invertible. Now, we have four equations, three equations which have on the right hand side 0 and the fourth equation we have right hand side 1. We will have two equations from the equations which have right hand side 0 and the third equation which has right hand side 1 and this equation is a plus b plus c equal to 1. These three equations will pick up these coefficients and form a matrix. The first matrix is minus 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, second row is 0 0.05, minus 0 0.15, 0 0.07, and third row is 1, 1, and 1. This is our main matrix, and we'll have the calculations based on this matrix to know the values of the variables. First, we'll calculate the determinant for this particular matrix. In this case, D will be equal to minus 0.1 within brackets, minus 0.15, minus 0.07, minus 0.05 within brackets, 0 0.05, minus 0.07, bracket closed, plus 0.1 into within brackets, 0 0.05 plus 0 0.15. <coughs> After simplification, we'll get 0 0.22 plus 0 0.001 plus 0 0.02 and the value for the determinant D will be equal to 0 0.043. Similarly, we will calculate the determinant for the A variable. A new matrix will be formed by replacing the column under A of the main matrix by the value column 0, 0, 001. All other values will remain same and its determinant will be now equal to 0, minus 0 0.05 into minus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.1 into 0 0.15 answer is now 0 0.0035 plus 0 0.015 equal to 0 0.0185 determinant a is now 0 0.0185 divided by 0 0.043 which is the determinant for the main matrix the answer will be a is equal to 0.43 similarly the db means determinant for the matrix B will be calculated by replacing the values of the column under the variable B by the value column 0, 0, 001. And now we will get the value for DB as minus 0 0.1 into minus 0 0.07 plus 0 plus 0 0.1 into 0 0.05. Answer will be DB is equal to 0 0.012. And the value of B will be equal to 0 0.012 divided by the main determinant 0 0.043. Answer will be 0 0.28. And next we will calculate the determinant for the variable C. And this is DC. And again in the similar way the column under the variable C will be replaced by the value column 0 0 0.001. And now the Calculation will be DC is equal to minus 0.1 into minus 0.15 minus 0 0.05 into 0 0.05, which is equal to 0 0.015 minus 0 0.0025 equal to 0 0.0125. The value of the variable C will be equal to determinant DC divided by D, 
which is equal to 0 0.0125 divided by 0 0.043, answer is 0 0.29. And now we have A equal to 0.43, B equal to 0.28, and C equal to 0 0.29. And these are the market shares of the bakery A, bakery B, and bakery C. A is having 43%, B is having 28%, C is having 29% at equilibrium. So these are the calculations we have to make for getting the probabilities at the equilibrium simple method, which is shown in this slide. Again, we'll have the same answer, A as 43%, B as 28%, C as 29%. And if we add 43, 28, and 29, the total will be 100%. It means our calculation is also Correct.